Uh, this is example one. Uh, this is actually a Shelby tube example. So we watched that short video. So this is a Shelby tube sample. And we know the weight of the moist soil. 17.53. And then we dried and weighted the dry soil, which is 14.98. And for Shelby tube, you know the dimension, so you know the total volume of the soil. So for this particular Shelby tube, it's 40 times 2.8 inch. And you also have 30 inch long uh, Shelby tube, they're different sizes. But for this one, it's 40 times 2.8. Yeah. Then we're going to calculate all these weight volume relationships. Okay. Moisture content, dry unit weight, moisture unit weight, porosity, and degree saturation. So to solve this weight volume relationship problem, so the first thing, as I mentioned in the key, uh, is to draw the correct number of faces. This is a moist soil sample, so you have three faces. Okay. So here I'm drawing a face diagram with three faces. Okay. This is again, this is a moist soil, so we have three faces. So the key to solve this face diagram with volume relationship problem is actually to fill in both sides of this face diagram. So remember we have the weight side and volume side of this face diagram. So the first step after drawing the face diagram is actually to fill in all these quantities. So we have the weight side and volume side. Okay, for this example here, we know the total weight. So that's the weight of the moist soil, 17.53. Okay, so we know that is the capital W. So I'll put it here. Okay. So that's the total weight. We also know the weight of the dry soil. So that's the weight of solids. And this is um, two point five five. Okay, so that's the weight side. So let's fill out this uh, face diagram. The weight side. So fourteen point nine eight, and then you have. So this, you can you have the weight of water, 2.55. And total is 17.53. Okay. So that's the weight side. So we have filled everything on this side. And then let's move to the volume side, see what we can find. First, for that uh, Shelby tube, we know the dimension of the Shelby tube. So we can calculate the total volume. Okay. So for volume. Okay. It's a cylindrical shaped Shelby tube. You know the diameter, you know the length, you can calculate the total volume. Okay. So the only thing here is uh, we're going to convert inch to, uh, to, uh, to foot. So let's do a unit conversion along the way. So it's, the volume is um, pi d, which is 2.8 square over four. So that's the area of that Cylinder, uh, surf, uh, that circle times length is 40. That's the length. So this gives you the volume of the cylinder in uh, inch cube. And then we'll, we're going to convert this to a cubic foot. So we're going to divide this by um, 12 to power 3. Okay. So that converts inch to, to foot. 
So the total volume of the Shelby tube in this case is about 0.143. Cubic foot. Okay. So I'll put it here. Okay. So we have the total volume, and it seems we have used almost all the knowns now. Okay. And we still have three unknowns to fill. That's the volume of the air volume of water and volume of soils. Okay. And then the next part is we need to fill out, fill out, find out these values here. So here, this is a, it's a very commonly used trick. You can call it a trick, but it's a, it's a very commonly used uh, equation for, let's fo focus on the water part first. If you know the weight or if you know the volume, so basically if you know either side of the water phase, you can figure out the other one because the unit weight of water is a constant, okay? So I'll start with, um, so since for this problem, we know the weight of water is 2.55. So the weight of water is simply the unit weight of water times the volume of water, okay? That's just by definition of unit weight, okay? Then you can back calculate the volume of water Volume of water, remember, is a constant, okay, 62.4. Okay. So that's 2.55 over 62.4. Okay. So you get the volume of water is, for this problem, uh, 2.041. Uh, So you know the volume of water. The next one is the volume of solids. So for volume of solids, it's similar uh, strategy, but you have to take one extra step. For water, you know the unit weight. And for solids, you're not given the unit weight, but you're given the specific gravity. So you need to take one extra step. So specific gravity, remember by de definition, unit weight of solids over unit weight of water. So here, So that's specific gravity from specific gravity definition. So if you know the specific gravity, you basically know the unit weight of the solids. Okay. So this problem is 2.7 times 62.4. Okay. And then the um, once you know the unit weight of solids, the weight of solids is unit weight of solids times volume of solids and then you can back calculate volume of solids. And I do have this number here. So this is 0 0.089. Okay. So once you have the volume of solids, you know the vo volume of water, you know the total volume, then the air part is just the difference. And substitute these numbers, that's just uh, 0 0.013. And the next is to use basic definitions to calculate these quantities. And notice that here the gamma s is uh, 168.48. Um, so, so let's start a new slide here. So on the left-hand side is our completed phase diagram. So that's the most important step for weight-volume relationship problems is to fill out this phase diagram. And then to calculate all these quantities, so we have five to calculate here, okay? So these are all just basic definitions. So we start with the first one. This W is water content. And by definition, this is the weight of water over weight of solids and this is 2.55 
that's the weight of water from this phase diagram we just completed over the weight of solids 14.98 and typically this is expressed in percentage so let's time that by a hundred percent and this is 17 percent okay so that's the water content and then gamma d is the dry unit weight so gamma d and this is again one of the basic definitions it's a weight of solid gamma or ws over total volume and weight of solid again something we completed in the phase diagram 14.98 and the total volume is 0.143 okay. and this dry unit weight is 123 pound per cubic foot notice the unit here is pound per cubic foot and then gamma moist gamma m this is a moist unit weight and this is the total weight over total volume again basic definition total weight is 17.53 and total volume 0.143 and this moist unit weight is um, I'm sorry the actually the dry unit weight this is 105 and the moist unit weight is 123 so you can verify these two calculations so the moist unit weight again is 123 and the dry unit weight is 105 and then n here is porosity and porosity by definition is volume of void over total volume so it's point O one three plus point O four one. Okay, so volume of the void is basically the volume of the air, which is point O one three plus volume of water, point O four one. So that's how I get these two numbers. Over total volume is point one four three, and this n value is point thirty eight. And finally, S stands for degree of saturation. So S, by definition, is volume of water over the volume of void. So in times 100%. So we have 0.041. So that's volume of water. Over volume of void is 0.013 plus 0.041 okay, and times 100%. So degree saturation is 76%. Okay, So that's example one on uh, weight volume relationship. Again, notice that the key is really to fill out that phase diagram. So fill out all the weights and the volume information. And then all the other calculations are just six. Well, one of the six basic definitions.